Hi everybody and welcome to the Beehive Workshop. Today we're making this great little beehive from the kit from the Crafty Kit Company. Now, just to let you know a little bit about the format of the video. Um, first of all, it's very informal because I like to um, make it more like a felt along than an instructions. Basically, when it gets to the bits where I do stab a lot all in one place or one area, um, I do actually do a, a bit of a fast forward there. You still see me doing it, but I was pretty sure you wouldn't want to watch me doing that. And you can do that part at your own pace. If you've got any questions, then please do put them um, in the comments underneath the YouTube video, um, which is on the Two Teak YouTube channel. Or you can put it in the Facebook group. My Facebook group is um, Two Teaks Tips and Tutorials. Um, if you just come in there and ask to join and ask any question, that would be great. Um, now, obviously, the best way to use the video would be, in an ideal world, to watch the video all the way along and then come back and do the actual felting. However, I know that we're all a bit more impatient than that. But if you could actually just do it at super fast speed just to see the different stages, if that helps you, um, but if you want to just crack on, that's fine. Um, I follow the instructions which are with your kit, so you'll have those visual um, reminders as well, as well as me showing you tips on how to get to those different stages. Okay, I'm sure we want to get on. So I'm going to go now to the overhead camera and then I'll come along at the end and say goodbye. Right, so here we are at the table for the beehive. So that's, first of all, check that we have everything so over here I have my core wall I have my light yellow wall for the beehive I have my very bright yellow wall for the bees the um, lovely brown for the accents and the door and the black I have my little wings ready to be cut out I have my mat and I have my needles now additionally to these items I will need a little pair of scissors which I have here for cutting my wings out when I get to the bees but that's a little bit later on excellent so um, needles we will we have three needles and as with all of our kits we will strap two together and leave one singly so that um, when we not want to do some just concerted stabbing to get the job done we can use the two needles because it's double quick um, when we want to do a bit more detail um, it's a bit slower perhaps because we want to take a bit more care with what we're doing we use the one needle so i'm going to initially just put my one needle in my little pumpkin i have a little bit of sellotape so i guess that's another thing um, need to put on the list which is a little bit of sur tape or if you've got masking tape or even a little plaster will do because it's really not um, a sophisticated piece of work here we really are just going to hug our little needles together there we go hug them yeah should I bring that forward so you can can you see that better on there so they the little tops going either way hugging and then I'm going to wrap my tape around if you've done any of the crafty kits other kits you will already have some of these but 
it's always good to use a nice new set. I always love using nice new sets. Okay, I will just stab that into the pumpkin. Okay, so wool. Right, let's start with our core wool. We're going to start our um, beehive first. So um, in the core wall, we will need to make the core of the hive, but also we're going to make the core of the bees. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take a small piece out for the bees. Okay, but coming to camera shot it might help, might not it? Right, okay, so here's the core wall. So we're just going to make three little bees which isn't going to be um, very much. So I'm going to just imagine rolling up, doing three Bs. So I'm going to allow, yeah. So let's allow that amount for three little Bs. Okay, so how long is that? <laughs> it's about 30 centimeters, but it's very fluffy at the end. So I think of a, of a solid, um, it's probably about 20 centimeters of a solid. Yeah, so put that over there for the bees. Right, now with the rest of our core, we're going to divide this into four. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half. Okay, so um, I shall explain that you can't pull with your hands really, really close together here in order to split it in half. You need to bring your hands out so that you can then just pull it very lightly apart. And then we have our two halves. Now I'm going to fold that in half again. This does not have to be exact. This is just so that we're going to make sure we've got enough wool to go around. It also gives you an idea of the sizing as you go, because sometimes you can start off and just build and build and build and then realize you've run out of wool. So um, it's a great idea to, whenever you're doing any project, um, be it your own project or with a kit, is to balance out the amount of um, fibers you're using. Okay. So um, I folded those two in half again, so I need to pull those. That's my center, hold my center. So I'm going to bring my hand out here, my hand out here, and then just pull, there we go. And I now have four pieces, lovely. So let's just take one of those pieces. They won't be even, they'll be thicker and thinner. So I'm actually, not going to worry about whether I've got exactly a quarter um, because if I need a bit more off another one I will take it okay so this is going to be the base of our hive and what we're going to do is we are going to just make um, a round but stumpy shape okay and the way I'm going to do this is rather than just stack it up into um, a wall, I'm going to do what I do in so many of um, the projects, which is I start off with a knot, just so that it gives you a really good base in which to stack. So let me see if it works. I think rather than if I tie that into a knot, I'm going to have to do another knot around it. So I think Perhaps, am I going to, yeah. So if I fold it um, in half, just stretch it out a little bit, and then tie a knot in it. There we go, not a hugely tight knot, because this is a fairly loose base. Okay, and then I'm just going to wrap my wall around. So let's get our mat. So I'm going to leave that bit up there to start with and I'm going to use this just to snab around. Now just in case this is um, one of your first projects because this is an easy peasy kit and it could well be, 
I will start off initially with my one needle just because I don't want to overstab to very start with and I really do just want to make sure I've got the right shape because we are going to be adding more and more wool we're going to be adding an awful lot of this core wool to this and then we're also going to be adding some yellow so there will be plenty of stabbing going on there'll be no problem with it being felted okay so I've got my knot this is the bit with our and I'm just literally put that round so that I've got a squat I'll decide which one's going to be the bottom in a moment but let's just wrap that round put it down and just lightly stab it in a minute you will see that by lightly stabbing with one needle it not an awful lot happens you'll think hmm am i actually doing anything at all but no by coming back up that hasn't sprung back up that's just very lightly tacked on okay because if you know the process of needle felting it is about gently agitating the fibers together the fibers all have little scales on them if you looked under a microscope and our little um, needles here um, have lovely little dips in them which mean when they come together with the scales they kind of lock together now it requires that the wool is agitated in the sense that they're all locking because if all the hairs were going the same way um, and were nice and smooth it would be quite difficult for them to felt together okay so i really am just very lightly tacking i will don't worry get the double needle on it just as soon as we need to make that a bit more felted which will be quite soon now let's bring down our top bit now I'm looking at our little shape on our instructions and I am just going to go around there a little bit just tack it there As it says it's got to be nice and loosely done at this stage so we really are just starting the gradual build-up of our hive okay now that really is just tacked on I will get my two needle now and just do a little more I'm going to start here where it's really quite loose and just tack it in do you feel if you use those two how suddenly oh yes that's making a difference isn't that <laughs> because you're doing double the amount but I'm say if you're worried about doing something wrong and you want to go slowly just use that one needle you will get there sometimes i think with beginners they like to go slowly to start with until they feel a bit more confident and then they want to know why it's not going fast enough isn't that just always the way for us all when we're learning something okay let's just up that in a bit more in there. Okay. Yes, I'm feeling where my original knot is. My original knot is more down the bottom than it is up the top. So that's why I'm going to call that my bottom and this bit the top. So let me just have a little more into the top turning it as I go keep it nice and even ok 
keep it nice and even. stabbed nothing too extreme going on there so there we go yep I've got an almost cone at the top I don't really need to worry about that too much at this stage but I like to have an idea of the shape I'm going for just so that I know where I'm, especially when I put my little knot. There we go, can you see? I've got my little shape of a cone. And now we're going to be adding a lot more around this, obviously. But I just wanted to make sure I've got that started. Okay, so let's get another quarter. Now with this other quarter I'm going to initially pull it in half just so that I add bits bit by bit so now we are going to add let's go all the way well I'm going to go round the bottom and then I'm going to come up a bit yeah to about just over two thirds up okay I'm going to use my single needle just to stab that in place tack that in tack that in place there lovely a bit of vegetable matter Yes, we're starting to uh, build up that cone shape. And now I'm going to take the other piece of that quarter and go round again. Not quite so far up. Tack that in place. Let's pick the two this time. Okay, because now we're going to felt that in so that it's a bit more solid. And this is a case of going all the way around again, not just felting on one side. I just squish my little needles together. They've done a bit of a splits there. Doing it again. Obviously didn't do them tight enough at the bottom, but we can fix that. Just generally felting that in all over. and evenly a 
aware of our little cone shape. We have a nice um, tied knot in the middle which gives it a nice good core in there and at the bottom as well so there's a nice solid bit there which we're felting towards all the time. There we go. Let's have a little look. Well, it's not symmetrical and it's certainly not going to stand up at the moment in the so I'm just going to go underneath where I seem to have got a bit of a hollow centre. Make that a bit more. all projects it's good to have a good old base we will add a bit more wall to the bottom in a minute but um okay so my cone is a little bit lopsided so i need to squish that in the great thing at this stage is you really can just squish it about so you can see that's a little bit lopsided let me just felt that in a bit more of that side. Keep him in line a bit. There we go. That's better. Okay. So now we need to make him a bit more, a bit bigger at the bottom. So we're going to take another quarter pull it in half again this time i'm going to do an all round the bottom okay i'll pick up my two this time and stab it straight in because we're quite well going on it now yeah just gonna stab that all the way around before we take a quick look make sure that doesn't go mad again in there I really do like to twist those at the moment. I might have to put another piece of tape around it in a minute just to make sure that it's nice and tight. There we go. That's good. Right. Let's make sure. I'm felting from the bottom to the top here because what I don't want is to have a big ridge where I added this piece. So just by going up this way, very slightly angled, it kind of moves the wall very slightly so that I don't, if I went in like this, it would just keep it all completely um, in its place and there'd be a bit of a ridge. Not that we couldn't style it out because we will be, as you know, if you see the pattern, putting rings around it anyway. There we go. Try 
sorry not much chance of my needles going all the way through to the mat on here but it's always good to have your mat there get into the habit of it okay just keeping that in mind of the overall shape and squidgy yeah I'm gonna be filling in some of these I've got a little bit of a hole at the top here which I will be filling in in a second now to start with I think what I might do is just put a little bit on the bottom here because that's not bad but I just want to even it out a little bit pop it over the base like that once again just pulled a bit more off of my main piece there up that base, ties it all together. a little assessment here so I think I do need to put a little bit at the top Let's take a little bit off of here I'm going to pull it from the center and then I'm going to halve it and I just want to put a little bit around the top just to fill in where it just doesn't look quite so even It really is just a case of having a look um, yourself and deciding where your cone perhaps could do with being filled in a little bit. The, look at the shape on the front of your kit, look at the shape in your instructions and just decide whether you need to add a bit here there or just all over just to give it a bit more but it's just gently bringing it up to that basic shape there it doesn't have to be perfectly like it is shaped on the kit you can decide you wanted yours taller or squatter however you like it's up to you but if you want to make it exactly like the picture do sometimes it's nice to
copy a picture exactly just to show that you can do it like that before next time doing your own thing. Because you might like it lots and decide you want another one. Right now I'm just doing a general stab around here so I'm going back to my bottom bit where um, I'd added fibres to the bottom, pulled them up the sides. I am just making sure. And I'm going to keep checking. Keep checking, keep checking. See, a mine is much squatter, isn't it, than the picture. Let me have a little look. Yes, there you go. I can squash that back into. I've obviously not made mine quite as compact at the bottom so I can change that just by doing a bit more stabbing and I am stabbing quite nice the up to the end of the actual barbs on the needles barbs there you go I couldn't think of that word earlier barbs on the needles and all the way around. I'm squishing it in with my fingers a little bit just so that I'm getting that compacted on that bottom third. Just add a nice layer all the way around because it's always nicer to felt wool in than it is to just stab. Well, I think so. There's something quite fulfilling about adding layers and just, which is why I quite like doing it. Okay, that's just adding another layer of white and really all I'm doing is tidying up the whole thing, stabbing it in, making it nice and um, secure. But it's just nice to do that with a layer of wool, as I say, rather than just stabbing into what's already there. Hence why I just add a bit more, add a bit more, um, until I'm happy. To the base just to give that that nice secure bottom as it were giving it a nice deep stab so it's taking them all the way in all the way into my not in the centre. If you have a different way of starting off your project, some people like to roll them up, do that. You don't have to do the knot in the middle, that's just my way of doing it. You might be trying that for the first time this time. I just think 
it's a good way it's one of the things that people say to me when they first start projects is they struggle to get that initial um, solid piece which they feel that they can then move on from and I always think well you know needle felting is all about um, the stylizing and the bringing together of the parts and making it look like the piece you want it to I don't ever think needle felting is all about the how do I start the project off so if we can get that done as quick as possible it's better for everybody I mean I don't think anybody's going to give you a needle felting award because you stood for five hours stabbing a center into place Well, I certainly hope not anyway. I think sometimes we wish we did get awards for the boring parts, but, but we don't. Someone else who's a needle felter will very much appreciate all your work that you've put in. But someone who isn't will only appreciate it if it actually looks like the item you want it to look like. going off camera then didn't I? Okay. I've gone onto a slightly different camera at the moment I have a feeling I for some reason have a tendency to wander off of this one I have no idea why in that center down the bottom right I'm going to add some wool into that bottom okay so I've pulled off a nice piece again this time I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to stab it in that bottom just so that I am sure I've got a nice solid base on here because the next stage we're going to add some of that lovely yellow so we just need to make sure we have got our core well and truly in because once that yellow's on we don't really want to have to redo the shape center again notice I do keep turning it around I don't want to keep stabbing it in one place Make sure it's even all the way around. Okay, let me just do my
Now, because the instructions talk about weight, as in how much it weighs, let's have a, that's right, I'm just gonna, I do quite often like to rub between my hands because it just smooths things off, which is quite nice. So at one point it said it should be 19 grams. And then we did add a bit more over that. Okay, so that's quite nice, isn't it? I'm just doing it in my hands like the picture. There we go. It's kind of like the picture, isn't it? Close enough. Close enough for jazz. And let me go and weigh him. He weighs 22 grams, so that's three grams more than it was. Should have been at step three, so that's fine because I've added bits as per the filling in, making it neater. Let's just, that felt just a little bit squishy there. Let me just said, I'm just going around feeling it, deciding if any bits of it are just a bit too squishy and giving it another dab The top bit has had the least bit of stabbing, really, hasn't it? Because we kept adding all the way down. So, I should really make sure. It's nice and tight, too. with that going to add some of the um, light yellow now okay so we want to cover the whole of the beehive with a layer of light yellow and uh, we want to apply it in the same direction that we added the white so I kind of round mine round that I did mine around that way so I need to continue on and do it around that way so we had a teeny little break there because the um, video decided to stop so let's chime ourselves back in okay so we have our lovely little shaped hive which we're now going to cover in the yellow fluff. So we've got our two pieces, which we're going to have pulled. So it's like a little ribbon, really. I'd say I always rather go over twice with thinner layers than try and put it all on really thick, really quickly, because I think that's where you get unevenness and where you run out of wool and make mistakes um, that get you annoyed basically and that's the last thing that we want so we'll have we'll do have two stabs at this haha <laughs> pun intended um, so that we can cover it with the first ribbon strip up and then go over the next one which we'll just cover in any um, sparse areas that we have so let's tack this down 
let's use the single one just to tack that down slightly there we go I think I might need to make sure I'm in the center of the table here a bit more in fact I think what I'm going to do there we go so that started that off now like a ribbon wrapping round imagine we're wrapping a present with a ribbon I think I just like imagining presents to be honest there we go Tap that in just to make sure it doesn't slide around and then wrap it round to the top and then I'm just going to stab it in at the top so that we've got a nice covering there. It'd be quite nice to get a good covering on the top first time round and then we can just make sure We've got the bottom bit sorted. There we go. Nice and gently does it. So I just like to smooth it down and then just stab it in place rather than leaving it all bushed up and expecting to felt it all in all different ways. Okay. So this moment, this time round, in terms of adding the colour initially we really are just making sure we get it nice and evenly all over once we're happy with the coverage we can then go over and make it nice and neat because the next stage we'll be adding the grooves of our honeycomb so we need to make sure we're happy with our shape and our evenness before we do that, okay, so I think, let me just get the shape of that at the top a bit better. Stabbing a little bit faster there, just, <coughs> it's my, um, I suppose process is that when I suddenly think oh I need to get that done quite a lot in there then I just stab faster in that particular area don't need to I just have a I suppose it's because you suddenly know yes that's what I want to do and you feel confident about it so you stab a bit faster in that area you don't have to stab fast at all in fact that's something which when you go on courses you realize how we all stab at quite different paces and um, you know someone whose work that you very much admire you suddenly find actually you know they they work very slowly it doesn't correspond that if you felt fast you're a better felter I find I felt quite fast when it comes to doing the core and then when it comes to doing the detail, I slow down considerably. Right, let's have another little look at that. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, we have a fly in the room. That's not very good, is it? And if he's trying to get on camera, we'll give him a few minutes to make the right decision before we usher him out the room 
Okay, so we have our second piece, which we're going to do in exactly the same direction. But I'm quite happy with my coverage at the top. So I'm going to slightly overhang the bottom. <clears throat> you see, so it hangs over the bottom a bit, just so that I can roll it over and know I've got good coverage at the bottom. And once again, just do my little, do my little stab. Okay. Okay, now. make sure we have that lovely coverage let me pull a little piece off what I'm going to do is pull a little piece off here just in case I found myself I've got a little gap that I want to fill up because undoubtedly I will right there we go and once again let's use our two needles just to get that nicely. And I'm gonna do this where I'm gonna move it around all the time, like I have done on so many of the other shapes. Keep moving it round. color we used to keep these once upon a time up until about I think it was two years ago when we just didn't have the time anymore because whilst they obviously don't need attention you know daily they do need attention weekly to check them. So we gave them to the local beekeeping group who had some new beekeepers. And in fact I still use the wax which came from the combs. We not only obviously had lovely honey, although we left a lot of honey on the combs for the bees, for them to sustain themselves. Um, there's wax when you take the honey off. You keep the wax. And when I wax um, claws and beaks and things, it's that beeswax that I more often than not use. So I really am just Dabbing generally all round here just to make sure there's a good coverage, it's even and it's attached. And obviously, as we're stabbing, we are stabbing into our little honeycomb here. So, honeycomb, beehive, honeycomb. What am I talking about? That's because I was talking about bees and honeycombs, isn't it? See? I get myself sidetracked. Um, yes, so it's felting it in all the time. This is why I say when you start off and uh, you initially do your shape, I don't worry too much about whether it's really, really solid right at the very start because we're going to keep on stabbing throughout the project. There we go. It's a lovely crunching sound, isn't it? make sure I've got the right shape yeah there 
make sure I keep my sort of well it's not point is it but it it does come in at the top make sure I still have that nice curve in at the top of stray fluff okay I just want to make sure I've got the shape that I want at the top here and when I have one needle I always think I have a lot more control over the actual shaping of things because with the two needles especially with the two I've got at the moment which seem to want to do the splits continually don't quite have the same amount of control. So I'm just using my one needle to go all the way around at the top here. Make sure I've got the shape that I want with all the bits which perhaps aren't quite as attached as I want them to be. So I can see this is a little bit too fluffy here. See the, the difference where you got the fluffiness versus the the bits which are definitely felted more. But once again, we will be going around and doing the lines in a minute. So it's a case of that we need to make sure we've got it felted um, down so that when we felt our lines because we'll be going around with a needle and indented the lines we need to make sure that um, our cone as it were um, is I suppose strong enough rather than um, less fluffy because the fluffier the less defined those lines will look now we're obviously going to use a bit of the brown wall to help define those lines but we do need to get a dent initially okay down the bottom there let me use my two needles just to get those going in going over going over once again, it is completely up to you how you want your hive to look. So we're going, to, we are actually today doing it exactly like it is on the picture. But if you have a hive in mind that you have seen, because um, that's one of the things is different countries um, have different bees, which have different formations, which do different shape hives, to be honest. I've never seen a square one, but you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to have one which is different, go for it. Well, I've seen a square box. But I've not seen a square woven one or a square one created by a bee. Rub over the surface. 
because what that normally does is let me see if I just do a quick rub all over I can very quickly see where it's uneven where it needs a bit more work so I'm hoping you can see the dimpled texture of the comb and if you look at your page and your number 5b you'll see that that dimpleness is very much as it is in that picture so basically I now need to felt this a bit more stab it some more um, to get it so that it's a bit smoother okay and I shall choose to use sometimes my two needles sometimes my one needle in order to do that um, and so I shall continue to do that um, and I will speed up the video so that you don't have to actually watch me do it and then we will come back again once I'm happy and you're happy with the smoothness of your comb and we will cone even and we will then add the line going round okay So it's worth me mentioning that I am just going to double check around. I haven't quite finished um, smoothing it down, but I'm just going to check. And I've got a little gap there because, you know, I saved a piece of my wool, which I am going to just add in very quickly to that bit there. And I'll have a little look to see if there's any other little patches which need my attention. Or I might just leave that little piece to the end just in case I make a little mistake, which is a, another little way. I do like to keep um, some of a particular colour because it could be that um, I, when we put the ring around it, I make a little mistake and I put too much on and rather than take it off I often will just put a very small piece of the main colour over the top and it just dulls down that particular colour rather than ripping out. So this is, it's painting with wool basically so it's kind of like painting and since um, if you put too dark a colour and you then want to dull it, you obviously don't take it off, you just lay another colour on top of it just to make it less bold. Same thing with the wool. Just go underneath here. And I will just also say that now that I'm pretty happy with my um, basic shape I still feel like I need to make a bit more of an emphasis of my top bit here um, but as I'm smoothing it down I now will not be stabbing when I was um, adding and I was really quite stabbing into the full bit up to that where the neck changes on your needle I was definitely going all the way in I'm now just going with the tips yeah just to do the smoothing because it helps and even if you do it at a slight angle rather than straight down it just helps to um, have less of the big um, they're not holes but the big dents um, in it even though rubbing it with your hands actually takes away a lot of those um, it just helps to keep it nice and smooth if you do it at an angle like that rather than straight ahead yeah I think if I demo I don't know if you can see it but if I go like that you can see the holes 
Whereas if I go at an angle, I'm actually moving, I'm still moving the wool inside, but just at an angle rather than straight down. Okay. I shall continue on. I think I'm happy with that. Still got my little piece of um, spare just in case I need that later on. So now we're going to create the grooves around the beehive. Oops. Um, so this time we are going to start from the top and work our way all the way round and down. Now each line needs to be round about one and a half centimetres apart. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to give that lovely idea. If we look at the picture, um, in fact I'm going to look at picture eight and you can see how many lines down. Now I don't know for sure, let me have a look, let me put my hand how they have in the picture yeah I think I think I'm about that size so if I can do one two three four five lines that would be great but as I say we're going to stick I think to the one and a half centimeters so let's start with the single needle pop these over here okay start with our single needle at the top So I'm not going to start right in the very central top there. I'm going to bring it just slightly out. Okay. Just going to try and create a little mark. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start immediately with the brown because I think it's the equivalent of taking a little thread and running it round and seeing how it looks. And that's what we're going to do. So let's take a bit of thread, a bit of wool, and rub it in my hands. Rub it on here so that Right, so that won't go all the way down, so I'm just going to stretch it a little bit. I don't actually know what length I want, so I'm quite sure I might have to add a bit more to it, but that will be fine. But less is definitely more when it comes to doing little lines like this. Managed to pull a bit off the end already there. Okay, I'll leave that for the end. Okay, so let's stab, let's anchor a bit just off of the top. Let's just anchor that end. Well, I'm holding it here so it doesn't go all the way in. Otherwise, it will just keep dragging this in. I just want this end bit in because I'm not going to be pulling on that. 
we are just going to take it round. Now, one good way of making sure, or check, not because as I say, it doesn't have to be exact, but the idea is to get it as close as what I'm going to do, because I do have these, um, my two needles do love to do the splits. I am going to, I've got my little ruler, um, so that currently is at about one centimetre. So I need it a bit more than that. So I need it at about one and a half. Okay, that's still at one. Or I could just get a piece of card, couldn't I? That might be a better way. And then I can check it that way. I thought I was being clever with my two needles, but no. So I'm just going to measure a little. So I just like to check that I've not gone too mad. So I'm just going to cut a little piece of card, which is roughly about one and a half centimetres. There we go. Right. That'll do. Seeing as my um, splits weren't quite big enough. Right. Okay, now we are going to take this around and I'm going to not initially stab it. Okay, I'm just going to take it down slightly, down, down, and then I'm coming around here. So let me make sure. Okay not be too free and easy with that and so now that I've come round to here and I'm going to measure my one and a half where that comes underneath I'm just going to slightly stab that in place there just so that I've got a good reference point just tack that in okay now I'm going to take it round a bit further like I say it's definitely not going all the way down this piece because it's really quite short and use my little measure just to make sure looks like it's got a little halo on it doesn't it there we go right so I get to there and then I'm just going to tack that little end bit there okay and now I am really just going to do a little because this is going to be a dent but what I'm going to do is actually make the dent with the shade color which helps us get the grooves in the right place and at the end of the day, we'll probably save us time. Not that time is kind of an issue, but sometimes it's nice just to get it done. Okay, let's make sure. If you think you've got too much fluff, and you want to get it inside, which bearing in mind, we're doing a dent here. So we can afford to give a good old stab away. Just stab in the same place continually, as opposed to don't stab all over it. Um, and then it will all just go into that hole and that thin line that you're creating. But at the moment, I am just going all the way up. bit like a Swiss roll at the moment there we go oh flies back there we go so next piece so I just want to get this <clears throat> in the right place so that then I'm really happy and then I can concentrate on doing the dents. Right, roll the second piece. 
if you're better than me, you'll be able to create a longer piece to start with. There we go, get that roll going. It's quite thick. So by stretching it, stretch it in different places, don't pull it all in one place, because that's when you pull it apart like I did with my little piece. any big lumpy bits which I'll then have to do more stabbing to get it thinner there you go <clears throat> of course you may actually prefer to find a piece of thread a very thin piece of thread and just take that down and do what we're doing here but because this is the colour that we will eventually be putting in to shade our dents, it makes sense to me that I use it to do the definition to start with. But there's nothing wrong with putting a piece of thread around first, making your dent and then putting this on top. make sure we step back yes okay now let's carry that down going again. Right, so this time I'm going to, I've got a longer piece, so I'm going to eyeball it and then I can come back and check it. Just pulling it a little bit tighter. Actually, get my five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Right. I don't need as long a piece this time as last time. There we go. Make a nice piece. Again, pull them. It's a bit of a dark patch there, which means it's probably a bit thick. There we go. That should be enough to finish it, probably too much which is not a bad thing. There we go, just tack that on. Okay, and pull it round the final wind around until we Come down there. There we go. 
finish it off tack that bit in at the bottom as it comes because that's my bottom piece I'm gonna probably leave it longer so I can decide where I actually stop it in a second yeah that probably is about right yeah because it starts there and ends there yes happy with that snip that off right so now it does look like um a pretty cake actually doesn't it that you'd buy from the uh, from the bakers so that's why now in order to get those dents but we know exactly where those dents are going to be we just need to stab all the way around so i'm going to get my two needles let's have a go see if the two needles are the way to go shall we start well let's start at the very top start at the very beginning it's a song isn't it right now i'm just going to stab continually in the same place there you go so stab 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 in that in the color that we've put down the shading we've put down just stab down in the same place so that you get a dent and do that all the way down okay can you just about see dent don't know i'll do a bit more round and then see if you can see what i mean but just stabbing so i'm just taking it in and i'm not bringing it all the way out taking it in and i'm just continually stabbing into that same place which number one makes the line that i've put in go thinner because it draws the rest of the wall down that one dent and hole and it makes the dent so I'm going to do that a bit of the way round and then I'll show you what mine looks like and see if there's anything we need to adjust see that I've started this bit that's where I've got to so that bit's still fluffy and big that side but this is definitely indented this side okay you decide how indented you want yours I'm initially just going to do it nice and delicately because then I can always come back around and do it more okay and another thing about the angle is you're definitely going in this time rather than at an angle too because we go at an angle that way when we don't actually want to make much of a dent but this time because we're absolutely making a dent we go all the way boom, straight down okay so if you have got yourself 
I just need to push that in a little bit more. But I'm pretty happy with my overall shape, my dents. Could give in a bit more, might do that a little bit more. Yes, let's go a little bit more just to make those a bit. It's so all completely up to you at this stage whether you think you want bigger dents, smaller dents. darker colour, absolutely no right or wrong other than if you have decided that's the way you want it then that's the way that it is meant to be. that a little bit more yes I'm happy with that now very good so I mentioned to you um, before that if you have feel that you've got too heavy a line um, that perhaps when you laid it out initially you made a thicker line than I did or perhaps even you've got it the same as me but you would actually rather it wasn't quite so defined now this is where you would use the piece that you have over and you would just take off a very small smattering and how where shall I demo this um, right so I've got a thinner bit there and then I've got a darker bit next to it so I would just lay that over you see how already you can see how that now is much less defined than that and then just with the single needle obviously go into where the the dent is and either side because you don't want to push all of that otherwise the line will probably disappear completely and that's not what you want you just want to make it not quite so defined okay so there I'm just going to lightly do that and now that I've lightly done that whoops and it's all in place I'm just going to use my two needles to go down the center there because I need to keep that nice dent at the sides Can you see how that now is nowhere near as defined as the bit above it? So you can very, with a very thin amount, go round and actually make that less defined if that's what you want to do. Once again, it's completely up to you whether you're happy with it being nice and dark or whether you actually would like it to be lighter. Okay, so we now need to add a little door. So now that you've made your lovely hive, um, slight confession to make, I made my door and then I realised that the camera wasn't working properly. So I am going to show you the after and then I'm going to turn it around the other side and we're going to do another one. So I'm going to have a front door and a back door on mine just so that I can um, take you through. So what was quite useful though is to um, be able to show you the height and also if you look at 
the picture on the front of the box. It takes it up to the second line, but bearing in mind that the first line is pretty low. So I'm going to go around this side and the second line is up here, but actually that height of it is going to be around about here because my lines, my second line is much higher around the back than it is around the front basically. So just be careful depending on which side that you're going to do yours. I guess it's e easier. Let me get my little ruler. So my door is three centimeters high. So that's probably a good gauge to go for. Okay, so get yourself some of the um, brown wool, just a smallish piece. Um, just bend it round and shape it so that you've got a nice little arch. Yeah, and then we will just place that on, just make sure I do get it the other side. Okay, so let me measure my three centimeters. So my three centimeters height is there. So I'm going to pop that in so that I can then add my bunch there. And then I'm going to stab round the edge of my doorway. Okay, so that we get our nice defined line. There we go. And then we can just stab in the middle because we're going to line it with a bit of black. So that will actually help give the definition at the end. But I always like to um, stab around the edge of things. It just defines it. It stops me going waywardly out the side, outside of those lines, because it's so easy to suddenly, and before you know it, um, you've got a double door. Well, in my case, probably not in your case. It's probably just me that has that problem. So anyway, just in case you do have that issue, it's just my way of keeping you working within the bounds. Okay, so that's quite lightly done, but as you can see, it very quickly looks, and I'm just going to do it a little bit harder just so that it dents slightly, because of course this is actually a hole inside rather than a physical door. Of course, you could actually do yourself a physical door. There's no reason why you can't. We're having a little stylized piece here, um, and it's all about doing what you want. And if you want to make it more that way, and you could use the black and put a little um, knob on the door or even, you know, fake wood, Okay, let me get some black. I'm just going to do it around the outside today. I'm not going to um, do a pretend door. Okay, so I'm pulling it nice and thin again. And once again, let's anchor a bit down the bottom here. There we go. Take it round. Doesn't matter if it comes apart like my piece there, because we're just going to bring then that bit back in. Because we know where our edge is, because we've already defined it with our, with our door. We are just using this as a highlight. There we go, around the outside edge, bring that over and down and down. Have another check to make sure I haven't gone wayward with my arch. I do sometimes go a bit wayward. A bit of a lopsided door normally. And I am, like I say, I am quite asymmetrical anyway, which is quite lucky really, because an awful lot of my pieces end up that way. There we go. So if I just move that underneath, that's a nice little door. So let me just tuck that underneath. My little excess. I'm going to just pull that little black bit off. Put that underneath. 
this helps pad that off if you want to you can cover up that bottom bit in the end with some with some white but personally because it's actually going to be you know down like that and no one will see it I'm fine with that so let's have a little look and see how this compares with my one on the back oh my one on the back's thinner there you go we've got a slightly fatter door that side but you know all shapes and sizes are welcome there we go so I have a double door <laughs> right so on to the bees okay bees now as you can see I've been um, having a little practice with my sizing of bees um, in your instructions so it is absolutely pelting down with rain again excuse me okay so I've been practicing with the different sizes and to be honest you can make your bees whatever size you want I had previously made some fairly large ones um, and then I made a small skinny one um, and to be honest I thought yeah that wasn't quite what I was going for so I came in the end to these two different sizes now when you look at the picture in um, your instructions picture 10 and you put these little ones this is more the size that the instructions are suggesting so it's this size that I'm going for um, I think of sort of like tiny little eggs really aren't they whereas this size is just a bit bigger but you know if you want to do yourself a big B or a bigger B I mean I think that's too big to be honest that one um, went a little bit wild so let me show you how to now that I've um, done all my testing also um, I know the instructions say to make the bee with the yellow and then um, colour with the white and the black. Um, controversial again, I am going to make with the core white and then I'm going to colour with the yellow and the black. In my mind, it just gives you the opportunity to make more bees, um, which in my case, because I made a few and then decided to go a different way, um, that was an advantage so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to show you how to make the bees using the core and coloring with the yellow and the black brilliant so what we're going to do is we are going to take some slithers and we are going to I'm going to show you how to use a cocktail stick to make this shape rather than to roll it up only because I find it a lot easier to start off with a very tight structure by doing it this way so I will show you this way I'll also show you the rolling up without the cocktail stick and you can decide which way is better for you so here goes the nice thing about using the cocktail stick is I don't really have to have decided how much um, wool I'm going to use to start with because once it's big enough I can just stop so cocktail stick slither quite thin presumably too much here but that's fine okay let me just stretch it out so I really don't want any thick bits like that so what we're going to do is we're going to take our ribbon of wool and we're going to fold it under okay so we go under and over under and over this is how we do this particular wrapping so the first one I'm holding it on with my other finger and I'm going to roll over okay and then I'm holding it still go over okay now as I'm doing this I'm holding it really close to the cocktail stick and pulling it tight there because the staple length of the wall means that I've, I've got the wall which is wrapped round. I've got the ends of it if I pull it down here 
like when we split the wool it will just come off it won't tighten it if I pull it here it will tighten it so I'm going to go over I'm going over in exactly the same place okay because basically it's going to be the ribbon is going to be more fibers in the middle and less at the edge so just by that notion you're going to have thicker in the middle and less at the edge and that's the way we want it okay so I'm going to keep going over and then I'm going to pull it tight keep going over pull it tight over over pull it tight okay pull it tight pull it tight actually I didn't have too much because I'm going to have a fat little bee okay right let me just pull that last bit off now make sure you are, do not have hold of any of the fiber because it will just pull the center out okay so push all those fibers down to the cocktail stick and then just hold tightly onto your fiber this end tightly onto the cocktail stick and you can just pull it out okay and here we have a little shape now I'm just going to lightly tack this final end so that it doesn't unravel shouldn't do anyway but just to be absolutely sure okay and now we have our little shape that we're going to play with so as I say this is the um, the kind of shape that we're going for and the size so what I will do to start with is to stab the ends because they were quite loose and um, thin so we can tuck those in okay see in the end tuck those in nice and neat nice and then go to the other side tuck those end bits in nice there we go nice neat neater ends right so I am now going to do some stabbing down the um, center of the body it's nice and tight but I just want to make sure that it really is Felted and a nice little tight body so that when I add my wings and my colour I've got a good solid a good solid body to add them to nice crunching and let me just tie it up that end again and the other end you're never going to get them exactly the same it, we're just sort of really going for a vague size we say slightly bigger than a kidney bean I think I'm a bit more than slightly bigger than a kidney bean here but I'm going to now do my rolling in my hand action. There we go. If you think yours is still a bit too big, just stab away. It will go smaller. If you're happy with it stop okay he's a bit longer okay so let's do another one where I use less wool just to show you again 
here we go wrapping around wrapping around let me get a few circles in i'm just holding the edge of the fiber here so it doesn't run away with me i'm holding this really close to the cocktail stick when i pull it tight and again there we go lovely nice and tight tight there we go once again let me make sure that I push all the fibers down that end and then pull the stick out there we go tack that down and then in the ends Stabbing a little bit more around, tidying it up, give it a roll in my hand. Take a bit of black bit out, stabbing it down again. There we go. Now that's a slightly smaller one. There we go. So I was going to show you the rolling up way. Okay, I'm going to do it on here so you can see. So once again, you've got your ribbon and rather than wrapping it around a cocktail stick, you just need to roll it up very tightly. So as small as you can, keep doing it very tightly, very tightly, rolling. If you suddenly think that's gone a bit wayward out that way, bring it in, bring it in. That side, oh, got a bit of a tail there. Bring it in. Roll it up as tight as you can. Oh, there we go again. And then stab. Okay, so now if you prefer to do it that way, then do it that way. If you prefer the cocktail stick, go that way there we go it's just about which way you prefer there's no right or wrong way so stabbing away I think I've made this one quite tiny. Stub those ends in. Go the other way. Stub that end in. Yeah, I think we've got a little baby bee here. Either way, you are just making yourself almost like a little leg. That we can then put our colours on to make a bee. Okay, there we go. Well um Okay, so colouring, right. So, we've got our, now is it best that I show you on a bigger one? Probably, because then you can see better. Okay, so, we have the white. 
Now on the actual B, the only thing that is white is, is the bottom. Okay, so we are going to take our yellow, take our bright yellow, yeah, and because it's actually white one end and black the other, we are just going to put our yellow down the middle. Yeah, bring it in from that end. Let me just tack that on. Lovely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack that on and then I'm going to roll it up. Okay. And then make sure that it's down from the bottom. We need to have a white bottom, okay? And then just stab that down lightly. Bring it in from that end, okay? Bring it in from that end. Bring it in from that end. We can always add a little bit of white to the end if we feel we've overdone the yellow okay here we go just going round round and round making sure that yellow is where it's meant to be and we're stabbing it as we go. Okay, we need to decide in a minute which end is going to be the bottom, don't we? And which end is going to be the head? Because the, black's going, the black end is going to be the head. Okay, so I am once again going to just do my my little shimmy. Lovely. This is a lovely yellow. Lovely bright. Don't know if you can hear that rain. Outside the window. But obviously not inside the house. There we go. Okay, so we have our lovely yellow. So we are going to put black on the head. So let me just for a moment decide. I think that's going to be the bottom. So that's going to be the white. Yeah, I think so. I think we quite like that. That's going to be the bottom. So this is going to be the head. Okay. So we don't want to put a humongous amount of black. So let me just add a little bit more yellow. And then we can pop the black on top. And the black can then define how big or small that head's going to be. There we go. A little bit more around here. Such a bright yellow. Having that white background, I think, does it a bit of good. Mm -hmm. There we go. I think we have added enough without going too far, which enables me to 
add a little black. Right, so black. We don't want it huge. A little black bit. Roll it up in our hand. Roll up into a ball. Okay. So, start just stabbing the centre to tack it in. Okay. And then we are going to just Stab around in a circle. Stab around in a circle. Okay, and then we have a little head end as it were so we need to do two black stripes we need to do one down the middle and one next to the white so let's roll it up okay let's roll that up so that we've got a nice stripe and then let's take another bit of black and roll it up And then we're just adding our stripe. Now, if you've got it thinner in places, don't worry about it at this stage because you can come back and just add a little bit more to that if you need to. What we just want to do is to define the line. We obviously have too much here and that's fine too because we'll just pull it off there we go nice little line to pull a piece off just because I know that that's too much okay let's go that way Okay. 
and then that's just going to do my little normal between my fingers okay there we go and so I have done this on the, the bigger one just so that hopefully it's easier for you to see but you don't necessarily have to do it this big and do it on a smaller one right so let's get our second stripe which is going to be basically down the middle here there we go i need to join those two together because i don't want it's a gap okay now Okay, decided that's how thick I'm going to do it. Lay it down, just stab that line on, then turn it round. There we go. Bring that one round to hopefully meet it. Right, let's just see if we need to tidy up any areas. Now I can just flip these along here. Tidy it up or I can use my scissors to chop off any rogue pieces. Basically, there's your little bee with his little white bum and his little black head. So all we need now to do is to take your scissors, snip in the sides and glue the little wings in. off a little bit of that okay so basically we are going to that's our front we are going to snip There. and where I've snipped I'm going to just make sure that the black line is still neatly there very good and then around the other side around there okay I will just snip again And just make sure that that little black line 
is tidied up either side of that snip. There you go. And then we just take our little wings and we glue them in. And there we have a little bee. And you can repeat that. Now if, um, once you've cut out your little wings, you suddenly decide you'd like um, another one, there's enough of the leftover paper that you could put over a wing and just draw yourself another one if you wanted to make some more because there's probably enough of the um, fibres for you to do that. So make as many as you want. Then it's just a case of popping um, a little pin. Let me find a pin. Popping a little pin in your bee pop it down. You can cover the little head over with a bit of the um, coloured wool and just pop it on the beehive. As far away um, from the actual beehive as the um, pin will let you, but just easily cover uh, a little bit of the yellow wool over that if you want to, or leave that the way it is. Now you can see how I've used my um, pumpkin here as a bit of a pin um, holder, a needle holder. You could actually, with your um, bees in your beehive, do the same for your beehive, of course. You might only want to use yellow pins or black pins, if that's the way you are. There you go, little yellow pin in there. But that would be a nice little practical, or, you know, pop it as an ornament. But I'm always, I love to have ornaments which are useful as well. So... Anyway, so there's your little bees. Um, make as much as you can see. I have many um, shapes and sizes for myself to play around with. Um, it's exactly the same process. And I do find myself it's um, easier to make it in the core wall and add the yellow and then add the black. Well, thanks for joining me on this workshop. Here's my finished little beehive. I'd love to see pictures of what yours look like. You can either add them to the comments on the YouTube um, Tutik channel, or you could come along to the, I'm gonna get this right one day, Tutik's tips and tutorials um, and put it in there. That'd be fantastic too. Um, and in fact, I love my little um, beehive so much. I think I'm actually gonna start using mine as my little needle holder for my needles for the needle felting. Anyway, it's been great and I really hope to see you soon.